Okay. Well, I'd like to um, call this meeting of the Select Board of Waitley to order. Uh, let me pull up the menu. Pull, pull up the menu. Listen to me. Pull up the agenda. Our uh, first item on the <coughs> agenda is about the meeting minutes um, from the July thirteenth meeting. Um, I don't recall getting any minutes. Yeah, I don't think I got any minutes, so maybe we should table that item and look at those minutes and get it back. our next meeting. Uh, second, vendor and payroll warrants. I assume then we didn't also get those by email either. I didn't see those. Okay. I sent everything out yesterday morning. Oh, I haven't got a package of any I was it, whose email would it have been sent from? Mine. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I can't see anybody now. <laughs> um, mine being um, Amy. Okay. Let me look again because I thought. Oh, I didn't get anything. That's weird. Um, yeah, that's... Julie didn't. Apparently, Joyce didn't. So. Signatures required and updated Board of Health recommendations are the two things that I received. Shall I send it off? I have it in front of me. Right. Like, no? Is that, yeah, the Zoom call? <laughs> they can't really see it. I see one that says signatures required, oh. uh, but that didn't have an attachment. That was sent before I sent the packets. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like more than one of us did not get a chance to look at it. So um, they are signed, um, but uh, why don't we put those off as well until the next meeting? Because um, I don't think anybody. I apologize. Would... I'm not really sure what happened. Yeah. Oh uh, well, you know that uh, it's not. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's an urgent thing. So uh, let's go on to public comment. Uh, this is where we uh, invite the public to comment on items that are not included in the agenda. Um, do we have anybody who would like to make a comment at this point? Okay. I don't see anybody wanting to comment now. Okay. Great. Um, the four, item four was skipped. I assume it wasn't very important. Item five is COVID-19. Um, we don't have any updates listed in the agenda, although I do recall getting a CC on an email from the Board of Health who um, made some tweaks and those were to be posted or perhaps are posted on the website now. Is that correct? And I think it might have been a copy I got from Amy. Yes. Oh, okay. I think it basically said we don't have to keep contact tracing lists anymore, but we continue with um, masking after you've tested positive and then for five days after you've tested negative. Um, and th those kinds of things are all the same and uh, recommending masking when you're indoors. Does that seem like a reasonable summary? Yes. Okay, but it is all in writing on the website. Okay, all right, zipping right along. Um, under old business, um, this is where like I just start putting the applause on the screen. <laughs> um, uh, let's get an update today from, from Hannah maybe to discuss the MVP grant that was awarded. And I uh, understand there's a little bit of stuff we have to at least discuss and then maybe decide in the future about our contribution on that. Yes. So if you take uh, it away, Hannah. Awesome. I am extremely pleased to tell you guys that we have received $304,611 in funding from the MVP grant program. Um, this is for installing solar panels on the rooftop of the town offices in addition to educational program for the youth at Whaley Elementary. Um, specifically about renewable energy and environmental science. Um, it includes a field trip for them. I'm very excited. Um, 
Please make a couple of small adjustments to the budget that we submitted, um, including adding some dates for the educational programming. I'm going to touch base with the Hitchcock Center about that since folks are on vacation right now. So we're expecting a response around next week. Um, we also need to um, address recloser and interconnect costs for connecting solar power to um, the grid and to the building. Um, those interconnect costs have the potential to run anywhere between $100,000 and $150,000. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak with Eversource today. They said that because our system is below 500 kilowatts, it's likely that we will not be incurring those costs. Um, I spoke with MVP and asked because we can't get a definitive answer as to whether or not we will be incurring those costs. They said that it's just something that we need to keep in mind as um, we install the solar system. So, or not the solar system, excuse me, the solar power. Um, so we just need to make sure that um, we're not going over budget with installing the full size system and also incurring those interconnected costs. So um, I'd like to get an application into them as soon as possible. I've spoken with Valley Solar. Um, they said that they also can't really give us a definitive answer. Um, so I, we just need to make sure that we have an understanding of those costs before we move forward with the project. Okay. And my understanding is whatever those costs end up being, say the biggest number you said was $150,000. If we were to incur that, that's our match for the grant, or is that something in addition to the match? That is in addition. Well, so the number that we have to work with from MVP is three hundred thousand ish dollars. Um, mm -hmm. That would have to be part of that grant funding. So I think the biggest thing that would be affected would probably be that we would be installing a smaller capacity system that would only cover a partial amount of the electric bill for the town, um, the town offices. Um, but I don't, based on the answer from Eversource, I don't foresee that being an issue. Mm -hmm. I would like more information, basically. Um, I'm going to resubmit the budget with your blessing um, on Friday to MVP. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 but uh, we weren't interrupting. I'm just trying to think of like um, Fred and um, and Julie, do you have any questions you want to ask now or? Are there any other costs that we'd have any other matching or? Yeah, so we are required to provide a 10% match that can be composed of in kind and in cash. So um, we're providing, we've signed up to provide about $10,800 in in-kind match and about $23,000 in cash match. Um, there are numerous places where that could come from, including, this is something that I was hoping to talk to you guys about, um, ARPA or free cash. Um, I spoke with Brian briefly about it. He suggested that we consider ARPA as our source for the tax ma cash match for this program. Um, I will leave it up to your discussion. And ARPA is an acronym for American Rescue Plan Act. It's the COVID relief money. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like the best and easiest way because free cash involves a town meeting. And yeah, ARPA is only a select board vote. Right. Yeah. Right. And what's the timeline for us having to uh, actually make that official decision? I mean, you don't have a number yet, so that's. <laughs> Um, yeah. Or an exact number, right? Because you're revising the budget. Exactly. So um, I'll be submitting the revised budget this Friday. Um, and we, I mean, we can wait until fall. The first time that we'll have an invoice from someone will likely be from the Hitchcock Center in early fall after they complete their lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first time that we'll actually have to have our money sources figured out so that we can pay somebody. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I don't. I think it's the timing is a little bit tight with free cash for that. I'm not sure exactly when we get the free cash, um, but that's yeah. Okay. Well, if we put it off till our August meeting, that would not cause any problems, right? And by then we we could actually make a motion and 
And I, I, I don't have any problem spending ARPA money on this. I think that was a good idea. And um, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think I'd have any problem with ARPA money either. I agree. Awesome. Okay, can it's you explain about, what the in? If I remember correctly, about three hundred eight thousand left. Yes. Yeah. That account. Yep. Can you explain what the in-kind donation or yeah. match portion match portion is? Mm -hmm. um, so the in-kind for this grant specifically will be, wow, words, will be composed mostly of staff time um, dedicated towards administering the grant and any preparation of materials, um, mm -hmm. also paying for materials. So uh, part of NDP requests that we make it very clear to the community that we're doing work by reaching out um, in person, electronically, and in print materials. So we're going to be printing posters and mailers to send out uh, to notify folks. And we'll be funding that ourselves as part of the impact match. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Where in the process should we make the decision or who make the determination whether this would follow the something that Eversource would require a hookup fee or not? And Right. Where in where the planning? I assume it has to be the planning before it's actually built. Yes. Yeah. Um, so my understanding is that um, in the quote that Valley Solar provided us, they included in their services the application to Eversource for the interconnection. Um, that can take anywhere up to six months. So I think that they're likely, once we give our contractor Valley Solar or whoever else it is that we get after going out to bid, um, they will apply on our behalf to Eversource for the interconnection. We're hoping to have the bidding finished by Let's see. by this autumn. I assume if Eversource comes back and says, no, it's too big, we will require the fee, mm -hmm. that we will then have to go back to Valley and scale down the project yeah. such that we don't. Exactly. Um, and I think that that's something that we should include in our bidding materials at the very beginning of the project. Okay. Okay. Does anybody okay. else have um, anything to add? Joyce, can I just add something? Oh yes, go right ahead. And I would think, uh, Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can push Eversource on a, on a decision, right? Hypothetically, if we have an X kilowatt, System with three phase power, will you require a um, interconnection fee or whatever it'll be a recloser fee? All right, I didn't catch the first half of what you said. Could you say that one more time? Yeah. Um, I think Eversource can give us a decision fairly quickly, right? If we give them the size of the system, three phase power, this is where it is. They, they should yeah. be able to turn that around pretty quick, I would think, with their with their engineers, whether it requires one or not. Hope. I would hope. Yeah. It, and I mean, they did give me the preliminary answer of because it's below today. They gave me the answer that because it's below 500 kilowatts, it's likely not going to require that fee. Um, so I, I imagine that they will be able to get back to us relatively quickly. Huh. If we can just get that in writing, that would be. No, it would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will reach back out to Valley Solar and. Um, every source to see if we can, in fact, get that in writing. Okay. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, Julie, do you have anything you want to chime in with or? No, no, just that that was a good idea to get it in writing. You'd rather not have that be a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So we'll put um, this item on our um, August meeting when we've got a little more specific numbers, maybe for uh, something to vote on. If not August, then soon thereafter. Um, okay, great. On to new business. Uh, we need to review an application from Nuria Energy for a change of manager for the alcohol license at the Waitley Diner. Uh, and I wonder if that's uh, what uh, Kay Cruz is here for. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, welcome. Um, yeah, it says Kay Cruz in your little box. Is that what? What's your first name? It's Kelly. Kelly Cruz, but it's Kelly Cruz. Yes. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Nice to meet you um, too. So I would. I, I don't know whether to turn this over to Hannah or to Brian. I think it's a straightforward item, though. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's it's an application for the change of manager at the the Whitley Diner for the alcohol license. Um, it requires a you know local licensing authority approval for the change of manager. It does not require public hearing. Um, so, um, and Ke Kelly, are you the new manager? So I am the district manager, but I oh. the diner. I run the diner. Um, the old manager has been gone since the end of last year. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I got TIP certified, so I am TIP certified. Every waitress in the whole diner has been TIP certified now. Um, there is a new manager that just came aboard. She's also TIP certified. Um, so since I oversee the whole diner, that's why they asked me to be the one who oh, Okay. Me. Yes. Okay. So it's not your name. Can you say the name of the, the new manager again, please? The new manager's name is Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Sandra's name will actually be on there. Um, Fred, Julie, do you have any, any no. questions here? No. Only ever having had breakfast at the Waitley Diner, I did not realize you had an alcohol license. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They only, they don't sell a lot of stuff. It's mainly tap beer. That huh? they sell. You know, they don't have bottled stuff or it's mainly on tap. Um, oh. and you have to a meal in order to even be able to drink their limits too when you have to buy a full meal before you actually are able to consume the two beers no questions from me okay um brian do you know of any red flags on this i assume think people get quarried and people get all kinds of things checked out if we approve this it goes to the abcc or yeah yeah we have to sign off and then um then it goes to the abcc yeah there's a there's a background check and okay okay well i would entertain a motion on this we approve the application from norian energy for change of manager i will second it okay great um and uh, all those in favor fred yes julie yes me yes Great. Well, thank you for coming, Kelly. And, uh, and I, I hope uh, smooth sailing and that Sandra works out really nicely as a manager for you. I hope so, too. She's doing great so far. So I hope so. Thank you. All right. Great. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Uh, item B under new business to review and vote uh, to approve the regional dog kennel agreement with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Um, so I've not actually seen this agreement, but I've seen them in the past. Is this, are there any changes from previous years? Kenneling agreement? Does anybody happen to know? Would it be in the package that you yeah. sent? The package that yeah. I apparently didn't yeah. send to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, I'm kidding. I can get it on my phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to look in my email again. I'm, yeah, I'm still not seeing it. Can anybody see that on the screen or no? Uh, yeah, I can see your screen. So this is the regional dog kennel agreement. Um, it'll be for the next three years. So it'll be FY23 through FY26. There's really just a couple minor changes from um, the last year's agreement and it had to do really, it was 1B. Um, 1BD, if you see at the end here, it says comma per dog. Um, that oh. per dog wasn't there. So what was happening, I guess what they wanted to guard against was, wait, we has 20 dogs at the dog shelter and, you know, oh. then we only give them $50 instead of, you know, okay. per dog. Um, that's the other one. And then they also added, um, uh, fee, I think it's 2BF here. Um, it just talks about recognizing that it's a short-term holding facility and that um, if the town has a need for the dog to stay beyond uh, essentially a long-term stay, that they could recoup re they could recoup their costs, essentially, and, and charge us $50 per day. Okay. Instead per dog. of just per dog, yeah, per, per day per dog, um, instead of the you know, our, our assessment for this is $350. So 
it's actually a really good deal for us to have a place where we can, where, where our animal control officer can, can bring dogs when we need to yeah. bring them, so. Okay. Well, we're not gonna be able to take advantage of that, you know, multiple dog discount anymore, but I don't see any reason <laughs> for that to be something, I wouldn't reject this uh, based on that. I, I don't see any problem with it myself. Um, Fred or Julie? No. Good. Okay. So we'll this one. Regional dog kennel agreement. And I'll second it. Okay, great. Um, we've got a motion made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Aye. Uh, Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Um, great. So the next item is to review and sign the 2022 state primary election warrant. And that might be something that's, oh good, that's on the screen now too. Okay. Uh, I, I take it we're not allowed to edit this, right? <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> Well, I mean, somehow we, we have to vote on this. We don't get to edit it, but, uh, and I, I am sure our town clerk has made sure that this is correct. And even then she probably got it dictated to her from the secretary of the Commonwealth. So this is one of those, I think it's a silly thing that we have to approve this, but I guess we have to. We approve the state primary election warrant. And once again, I will second it. Okay, uh, great. Motion is moved and seconded. All those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Zooming right along. Hey, this is, we're doing pretty good here for time. Brian's going to be able to get, you know, back to, well, where he should be, uh, sleeping off the COVID there. Um, let's see. No, D to discuss requests to carry over vacation time from FY22 to FY23. Um, so my understanding of this, it only affects two employees who had planned to take some time in June and that time uh, they end up not being able to take it for reasons that were not particularly in their control. Um, and uh, so that in that case, we've, uh, we've always had the policy that we would um, uh, consider it here as a uh, to kind of override the rules for how much vacation you can roll over into the next year. Um, does anybody have any um, anything they want to add to that or any further discussion? I think it comes to 27 hours in one employee's case and 35 hours in another employee's case. Um, and I hope they're going to take that time because, you know, they just, our, our town employees do so much for our town and they, they're always being flexible to help us out. Um, I'm inclined to be flexible to help them out, um, especially in a case like this where it wasn't something that they had uh, great control over. Um, to Julie or Fred? I'll, I'll jump on it and say uh, I'll make a motion to carry over the vacation time for those two employees from fiscal year 22 to 23. Second. Okay. Um, great. Motion is made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, next, uh, review and discuss a special event application for a block party at Pine Plains Estate. I think this one just depends on whether I'm available to drop in and crash their party. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, but I've not seen the application. Um, I, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and is this, has this been to the police department, the fire department, and all the other folks who need to sign off on it yet? Or are we the first? Um, so any approval would be contingent on the, on the department sign offs because it came to us first. Oh, okay. So we've got it first. 
3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Oh, on the 13th. I'm not going to be able to crash that, I don't think. Darn it. Okay. Well, we could. I could probably approve it anyway. Um, uh, I can't see much more about the event other than it's 3 to 7 on the 13th. Is there anything below this? I made a number of participants, 40. Staff volunteers, five. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. And then street. Yeah. We approve the application. I'll second. Um, great. Uh, mo motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Yes. Aye. Me? Yes. Okay. Now, to the culmination of the meeting, town administrator update. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite hour. Hey, you know, I, I love town administrator updates. I know John used to make funny noises about them, but I really, I really like it. Uh, first one. Uh, the first one, um, we just wanted to Joyce. We just wanted to let the other board members know about our phone call with uh, uh, DMCTC. They operate uh, and uh, they own it now. They own the gray building, right? Struggle of Shops, um, and they have a uh, fully licensed uh, marijuana or cannabis retail shop. Um, and they just wanted to check in and, and give us an update um, as to as to their plans, uh, future plans and, and current plans, it sounds like they're they're hoping to open. Boy, my memory is not good. Um, by the fall, I think is that what he said, Joyce? Um, I always take the dates with a little grain of salt because something always slows you down. But yeah, that's the the timeline was months, not like half year, nine months. It was a, a matter of a few months. Yeah, and and the. And they, they wanted to really have a discussion about what they're going to do or what, what their plans might be with the vacant space that they have in the building. Um, it's quite a large building and they're not going to occupy. Um, I don't even think they're going to occupy half of it probably with their retail. Um, and they were hoping to attract cannabis related businesses, I would say, um, to the vacant space. Obviously, that's anything that's involves cannabis products per se is still going to require a host community agreement with the select board um and then uh, licensing by the ccc and obviously land use approval through the relevant boards at, at the town um i think some of the ideas they mentioned was were cannabis attorneys um a possibly a, a tier one uh, craft cannabis grow operation i don't know what the difference is um tier one is, is a small i think tier one's a small size or there might be a tier zero who knows uh but it would be a small one i think they mentioned it yeah. possibly in the basement um they also talked about um yeah delivery. i think this is oh, oh that's right delivery uh some, some sort of cannabis delivery company um and i think the one that's going to generate the most discussion is um they wanted to sort of broach the idea about uh, uh, social consumption. La I think they called it the lounge, social consumption lounge. Um, currently, um, as I understand it, there's the state only allows it in certain what are called pilot communities. I think uh, Jared had mentioned that I think Amherst might be one of them, North Adams, Springfield. Um, the other three were in the eastern half of the state. Yeah, and this is, it, it's essentially, uh, I, I assume it's the equivalent of a, a bar where you can get alcohol, but you can be served cannabis and consume it on site. Um, so right now, obviously, Whitley wouldn't be a pilot community. Whitley's not a pilot community, um, but they at least have that interest and they wanted to share it with us to sort of, I think, take the temperature of the select board in, in the community. I also think they're having conversations with the planning board, possibly tonight um about that idea so it, it's this I, I think it's the start of a, a much longer discussion with probably many more groups involved um but at least wanted to put that on on the select board's radar 
with, with is that about everything? Pilot, with, the, with the pilot community, it sounds like there's nothing that we're even going to be able to do about it until the state opens up to more locations. Yeah, yeah. And the, it seemed like the timeline for that would be um, he he said he thinks it's going to be about a year from now. So if we were to want to allow such a thing, we'd have to do probably, uh, and you know, I'm I'm only you know I'm not 100% sure um, of everything, but we'd have to do something like we did at the previous town meeting, which adds uh, like social consumption to the table of use in our bylaws. That's the kind of thing that that would probably have to happen before uh, it, and this kind of business could open. I'm not saying that means, you know, we we should you know jump to it and get that planning board working on that or something like that. I'm not trying to say that because uh, as Brian said, these they're just kind of starting a discussion and there's uh, there's time to to think about that and uh, even you know see what the planning board says, see how things go in these pilot communities in the next I don't know six months. Because I think it was relatively new in the pilot communities as well. It had not been going on there for years or anything. Maybe it's been going on for weeks or months, maybe, at the time we talked to him. I don't yeah. know what the start date was, but it was very recent. Um, so, you know, basically keeping our ears to the ground on what's going on in those communities would probably be a good idea for for all of us, you know, when we're reading the newspaper or talking to folks from North Andams and from Amherst, I guess. Um, so that's, uh, that was, I think that's really the, the main thing he asked us to do is just um, keep our, keep our ear to the ground and um, because they're going to come back at some point and ask for say the planning board to add it to the table of use and things like that. Although they've not done that so far. Yeah. Um, so we're meeting remotely. So that means that uh, the legislature extended remote meeting past July 15th. Um, it, didn't, I guess the extensions didn't go as they planned and the House passed a separate bill and the Senate passed a standalone bill. And there was concerns with the House bill because the House bill essentially mandated remote participation um, in all public meetings where the public could be present. Um, and there was concerns from communities that it was an unfunded mandate um, and the deadline was approaching. So they essentially passed a simple compromise bill to extend what was already in place. Um, and that's that will be in place until March 31st, 2023, until they realize that the deadline is three weeks from now and they all race to do something again. Um, sounds like a continuing resolution for the federal budget. But anyways, we are where yeah. we are now and through March 31st. Um, and then uh, speaking of some things that are complete, uh, FY23 state budget, um, the legislature has passed a $52.7 billion FY23 state budget. It has not been signed by the governor yet. Um, so the governor can sign it. They can sign it in veto portions or um, can veto the whole thing, which isn't going to happen. But um, it has technically not been signed by the governor yet. Um, the good things for Waitley, I guess, is that... Um, Unrestricted general government aid, that's our most flexible form of state aid that's, um, that the legislature agreed that that should be funded at a 5.4% 5, 5 increase. Um, there's increases to charter school reimbursement, which is also another problem that we have um, because the charter tuition that we pay out is never reimbursed 100%. Um, and that's money that, that comes out of our budget. And um, I think for the first time in a long time, there's increases in uh, state-owned land payments. Hopefully that will also um, remain in the budget that that uniquely impacts Western Massachusetts. A lot of it impacts Waitley. There's a sizable portion of state-owned land here, even more out in the Berkshires and, and those places. Um, and obviously the state does not pay taxes on real estate taxes on the land that it owns. So any increase in those payments 
it, it is helpful. Um, so, uh, and there's also increases in education, um, education funding, which are helpful, um, more so at, I mean, every increase is, is good, but more so I think at the frontier level, um, when we get into per student increases um, with such a small elementary school, um, you know, it adds up to less um, overall because we have fewer students, but um, that's pretty much about it. Hopefully the governor will sign it this week. I would hope um, maybe next week, but um, hopefully that will happen soon. Okay. Well, we've reached the end of the agenda. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Or next states of meetings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Um, do we need to have more than one meeting in August? Do you think? Um, it's hard to say. I, I can't think of anything that's pressing. Um, if we, if, if we do go to one, I would, I would, you know, hope that if we needed something signed, we could do a quick remote meeting. Cause we can do that now. Um, but I don't know of anything that's oh. entirely pressing. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, then dates, if we're sticking with Wednesdays, um, then, uh, the, I've got the 17th marked as a potential date for a meeting on my calendar, 17th and 31st. Um, and I think we, I that, that may be very, very old information though. So that might not, I've, I've actually got August 3rd as well labeled um, as a potential date for a select board meeting. Um, Your problem I, child new member. <laughs> has conflicts uh, on the 17th and the 31st uh, at 7 p.m. I could meet earlier than we uh -huh. um, I would be available on the 3rd and on the 24th at um, regular time, 6 p.m. Do you think we could um, manage with just a one meeting on the 24th? I think the 3rd is... Uh, that's next week at this point. I don't think we need a meeting next week. Yeah. So that's only 24th is fine for me. 24th at 6 p.m. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. And that gets us into, uh, yeah, so that gets us into uh, September. I'm guessing we'll probably need two meetings. But um, so I've got it now, the 24th. That being done, I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody.